Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to be finally getting started on the animation blueprint for our distance matching system. Everything that we've been working on thus far is going to start coming together. And there's not much else to say, so let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so finally we're going to start on our animation blueprint in this video. We have everything here that we need to get started with it, so that's what we're going to do going to go into the distance matching folder, then the character folder, I'm sorry, then the blueprint folder, then the character folder, and we're going to create an animation blueprint, we're going to select our Unreal Engine mannequin skeleton, and we're going to name this BP underscore dm underscore anim bp we have a bp at the end so let's just do dm underscore anim bp anim blueprint now we can open it it opened up on my other screen i'll bring it over and now let's go to our event graph The uh, first thing that we want to do is we want to get an event blueprint initialize animation. We're going to get a try get pawn owner. We're going to get an is valid. I'm sorry, not that is valid. We're going to get a uh, this is valid. So I can connect the execution pin from initialize animation into the is valid node. And if it is valid, we can cast to our we can cast to character. And as cast to character as character, we can set a new variable. Call it character. And now for event blueprint update animation, we're going to get our character variable. And the first thing we're going to do is cast to our distance matching character. And now casting isn't something that you should make use of a lot of the time. To keep this, to keep things simple enough in this series, I'm just using a cast here. There are other methods. I look at the advanced locomotion system as an example of how to pull variables that are being set inside your character blueprint into an animation blueprint. The advanced locomotion system does a great job at that, but I'm trying to keep the main focus of this series being distance matching. This does the same thing and it's not as efficient, but it will work for this series and so that's what I'm going to use. And so as our character, we're going to get some variables. We're going to get has moved. We are going to get stopped. And we are going to get stop location. not finding my variable let me click back over and see that's because we don't have that variable here yet okay so we're going to create a new variable inside of our bpdm character it is going to be a vector called stop location and we're going to set it from our predict stop location function in between it and our draw a debug sphere node so we're going to plug everything up there compile and save and now we can get our stop location variable inside of our animation blueprint now we have these three variables we're also going to get our character movement component
and from it we are going to get velocity have to scroll down to the bottom here we are also going to get the current acceleration now for the three variables we're going to drag out from them and click promote to variable and we're just creating variables in our animation blueprint with matching names now that we have all of these we can kind of organize them here and plug them into our cast to bpdm character node we're going to plug that into has moved plug has moved into stopped plug stopped into stop location and now we're going to drag out from velocity and we are going to again promote it to a variable we're going to drag out and connect set stop location to set velocity the next and final variable we need is our acceleration variable so i'm promoting this get current accelerations return value to a variable and i am naming it acceleration we're going to connect set velocity to set acceleration and we have all the variables that we will need for this video so now i'm going to go all the way back up to our cast to blueprint distance matching character and i'm going to get a sequence then zero is plugged into our set has move which is plugged into all of our other sets i'm just going to drag our variables off to the side so that they're out of the way also going to for the sake of keeping things clean and easy to follow add a reroute node from r as bpdm character and i'm going to plug in everything we're getting from that into the reroute node so that I only have one line so I'm only going to be crossing through one line with my second execution string on my sequence now this second line is going to go to a new variable that we need to create and we're going to call it curve time it is a float we're going to set curve time our execution pin is going to be connected to the second execution uh, spot in our sequence node and for our input into curve time we're going to use our get curve time function for the time being, I'm just going to focus on stops when the character is moving forward. We'll expand this code for when the character is moving backward and in other directions as the series goes on. But for now, I'm going to drag out from here and I'm going to get a select node. For I'm going to end by drag out from here, I mean animation sequence on the get curve time for those of you who are just listening and following along and on option zero actually we need a boolean here and this boolean is going to be called left up referencing which foot is in the air so that we know which stop animation to make use of i'm going to connect that to our index and for false i'm going to get our run forward our um in run stop f write up anim and for true i'm going to get our in run stop f left up anim for our curve name i'm just going to type in distance and now here is where our stop location variable comes in we need the distance between the stop location and the character's current location. So, 
I'm going to get a our character variable and our stop location variable. I'm going to get actor location um, from the character. And I'm going to get a, the distance of these two vectors using the distance vector node. And I'm going to multiply this return value by a negative one. and plug that into curve value. Now, we are going to get a print string. And we're gonna place it after the set curve value. I mean, I'm sorry, the set curve time. We're gonna set the duration to zero and we're going to plug curve time into this in string and that will give us a conversion node that will convert our float to a string. Now we're going to find our animations, their distance matching animations and I'm looking for our run loop here, our run forward loop in run f anim. And I've placed these two markers down um, this is not the first time I've worked on some of this stuff inside of this project. They're not supposed to be here, but they're already here. And so when the left foot down is when the heel of the left foot, if you go into the front perspective mode, which is actually from the side, is right on the root is right in line with the root like this you want to add a left foot down notify and you're going to do the same for a right foot down notify you can add a notify just by right clicking on the notify track add notify new notify and you name it l foot down or r foot down and we can then you'll save that close out hey everyone editor ethan here and i realized that i forgot in the video to go through while I was recording and enable root motion on the animations that we're using so make sure you do that and we're now going to search in our event graph of our animation blueprint our foot down and we'll get an event and a notify our foot down and I'm also going to get an L foot down And now I'm going to set our left up variable. So if the right foot is down, left up is true. And if the left foot is down, left up is false. And we only need this one variable because this left up is false, that our right foot is up. We don't need the two variables. That's just adds a bit of unnecessary complexity. So we can just know which foot is up with our single left up variable. Now. If I compile and save, let's just watch as I stop and see what happens. Nothing is getting printed. So let's just up the duration to two on our print stream. Oh, of course, I'm silly. Of course, nothing is going to be printed. We need to go into our character, select our mesh, and tell it to use our new animation blueprint. And now, I'm going to set the duration back to zero. Compile and save. And when we stop, it uh, gives us our animation time. So now, we're getting much closer, everyone. We can go to our animation graph. And we are going to create a new state machine. And I'm going to name this state machine Locomotion. I'm going to plug that into Output Pose. I'm going to enter into it. I'm going to create three states. 
and so our first state's going to lead into our second state, second state into our third, our third into our first. That first state is going to be called, I'm using F2 to instantly go into rename, idle. State 1 is going to be called running, and state 2 is going to be called stopping. Now, we will have a starting state, but I, that's a bit much to go into in this video. In this video, I just want to get our animation blueprint set up with our stopping set up when walking forward. So, in running, we're just going to get a play in run f anim. We're going to plug it in. And now we're going to go over to our anim preview editor. We're going to go to edit defaults. And under root motion mode, we're just going to say ignore root motion. Eventually, I'll have in place animations that we can swap over to, but uh, we won't be using montages in this series, and so we can just ignore root motion here. You'll be wanting to use in place animations instead of root motion animations. Inside your animation blueprint, just the root motion versions of the same in place animations inside of your uh, main blueprint. I'm sorry, inside of your animation blueprint. So, but for now, while we're just setting this stuff up and have the root motion animations, we're going to, for now, ignore root motion. Now in our stopping state, we are going to add a new state machine. And this state machine is going to be called right slash left. We're going to plug that into our output animation pose. We're going to enter the state machine. We're going to create a state called entry, a state called left up, and a state called right up. All right, so I've decided that I'm gonna go ahead and cut this video here and split it into two separate parts. Otherwise, it would be really long, 30 to 40 minutes instead of 15 to 20, which is the length I'm trying to target for the videos in this series. And so that video will be out Monday. I'll see you all then. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, be sure to give it a like. And if you want to see when new videos from this channel come out, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell.